Hi and welcome to This is Ibrooks. I'm joined by Craig Dennett. How are you after that, Craig? Uh, thoroughly enjoyed that, to be honest, Kyle. I um, wasn't sure what to expect tonight. And Dundee, given so many delays and things like that, they start a kickoff and then obviously they delay right at the start of the match. But thoroughly enjoyed that performance. And we even saw a Lammers and Dessel go, um, which was a, a real novelty. And uh, yeah, one we'll discuss, I'm sure. Yeah, that's that exactly. Tonight did have the potential to be an absolute stinker, didn't it? With those delays, obviously the pyrotechnics. Um, but as you said, 5 0 win, a Lammers assist, a Lammers goal, Danilo assist, Danilo goal. Uh, Dessa's getting involved in the action with a very good goal as well. But listen, we'll take it back to the starting lineup. We had Butland, Tav, Goldson, Balogun, Yilmaz, Lundstrom, Jack, Wright, Lammers, Sima, and Danilo. Um, how did you react initially to that to that lineup, especially Leon Balogun starting just coming out of the cold, no pun intended. Yeah, I wonder maybe I think someone on our Twitter account made the joke about him being found <laughs> in the cryotherapy chamber or whatever it's called. So um but no, I think I was I was surprised, especially because Ben Davies was up for the press conference yesterday. I was surprised yeah. that Ben Davies wasn't in the start lineup. I don't know if it was something that he's maybe picked up uh, in the training session or whatever or, or something he's felt afterwards. So that I think it's the the signing of Leon Balogun itself came under came in for a lot of criticism, but I think he showed tonight exactly what he can offer us in terms of just being a really solid defender and it does the basics. Um, I thought he was really good. He even turned into Maggi Baguera at one point, so um, thought he was really good. It was I felt it was quite ex- obvious or quite expected that Todd Cantwell would probably drop out of the team just for a little bit of. A respite, I guess, um, after the last few games, and um, Scott Wright obviously came in. Um, I thought he did. Scott Wright did okay. Um, Sam Lammers kept his place, which I was surprised about. Yeah, but he's obviously made an impact today. I thought he was having an okay game until the last fifteen minutes or so, and he obviously stepped up. Um, the uh, and then Danilo starting was a real boost. I think he showed the, he showed his qualities. He needs to find out how to. Finish, finish off more of those chances. He was, um, <laughs> but he's, the good thing is he's getting in the right spaces and he's making movements and he's getting, um, he's getting away from defenders and he's finding his, he's finding himself in yards of space, just six yards from the goal. I think on two or three occasions he found himself in in that kind of space. So that's a real positive as well. I think there was loads of positives um, to come from tonight. It was thoroughly enjoyable to watch and uh, yeah, racked up goals in the goal difference as well. Yeah, 100%. You already alluded to um, that sort of uh, Baguera-esque run from, from Balogun. Rangers pretty much got off to the, the perfect start on the, on the second restart. It was a brilliant run down the, the centre of the pitch. I actually felt that was a real feature of our play tonight. I was not expecting our centre-halves to to push forward that much. It seemed to create a lot of chances. You saw Goldson late in the second half doing it. Um, and, and the other brilliant ball through to Danilo, as you mentioned, and, and cut across the goal but the real pleasing aspect for this for me was there was three players literally ready to to hit that in the back of the night I know there was a few jokes about Sam Lammers diving out the way thankfully so that so that Ryan Jack uh, ended up scoring it but uh, what did you make of that first goal and Ryan Jack's performance in general tonight we touched on it a wee bit in the uh, post-match after the Hearts game but I felt that he made a real difference to us tonight, he offered a real good balance in terms of sweeping up and, and I thought it was a pretty good performance from Jack tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Before I get on to the goal, I'm going to actually talk a bit about the pyrotechnics because there was a lot of um, outcry on social media, I guess, about that as we faced yet another delay. We'd already waited an extra 45 minutes for the kickoff to happen, two minutes in, and um, obviously there was... Um, it's quite a, a flare display from the, the away fans in, in that stand um, set off the fire alarms. Um, a lot of people had a lot of issue with it. I, th- I didn't have as much of an issue with it. I actually quite enjoy it when um, there's that bit of extra atmosphere created by uh, some of the pyrotechnics. Obviously, it has to be safe. Um, but I think actually it comes more onto the authorities because it's it's part of football culture now in, the, in Scotland, at least, maybe not so much the UK um, UK wide it's kind of come over from from European areas we've been to games in Germany Kyle we've been to games in other countries where it's where it's been done and it's been done safely and you see it, you see the the fans working together to meet the safety requirements of the stewards and I think it comes to the point where police Scotland just need to accept that this is part of the the culture here so 
let's do it safely rather than leaving people to their own devices, which can obviously put people in, in, in harm's way. Um, so, yeah, I've, I I personally didn't have a problem with it, apart from the frustration that it delayed the game even further. Um, and, the, and actually the players got taken off the park. But I was quite, um, I'm quite on board with that part of football culture and I quite enjoy the fact it's coming more and more to Scotland um, and um, it's just it's on the police now to work with fans to make it safer. Yeah 100% totally agree with you there in terms of as long as it's done safely that that that's the the most important thing for me as you said we, we've seen it in other countries but uh, well said I'll bring it back to Ryan Jack thoughts I on that <laughs> so Ryan Jack came in obviously he's been um He's been injured for a little bit of time. He's kind of made his way back. He, I thought he was good tonight. Actually, I was, thought everyone was pretty good tonight. It's hard to to find fault, and apart from being a bit pernickety about some stuff, it's hard to find fault in much that, that happened tonight. I thought we were we started off well with that Liam Balogun run, great um, ball into Danilo, Danilo's ball across the box, and like you say, there was a few jokes in the WhatsApp group and stuff like that about Sam Lammers jumping out of the way. It was a good finish. Glad we had people queuing up because time after time we've complained so far this season about the fact that we never have anyone in the box. We never have anyone there to pounce on loose balls. And actually we had three players there. Um, so that was really refreshing to see. And I felt like we just kept creating chance after chance after chance. We were quite wasteful in terms of possession for a period. There was like a 15, 20 minute period um after the after the first goal where I guess we've seen a period like that in, in all games recently where we just the football seems a bit like a hot potato and as soon as we get into the final third the passes are a bit uh, wayward and we're, we're we're losing possession. So that was a bit disappointing to see and I'm sure if we come on we'll be trying to tighten that up to get back to the, the dominant football. But I do think we were dominant throughout the game. Don't think Dundee necessarily offered very much. Um and it was all about, I think, from that point on, we're just get the second goal as quickly as we can and um, that almost um, secure the victory and then see where we go from there. Yeah, 100%. You, you touched on a, a word that I've, a, I've written down in my loose notes tonight, and that's dominant. I feel like I'm writing that down quite a lot under under Kamal's tenureship. Um, I felt that just generally all over the park that we had a much... Uh, bigger sense of urgency in terms of going forward and sen- uh, in terms of our defending. Uh, I think the, the, the Danilo goal that we'll come on to, um, that sort of encapsulated that all. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think that's fair, that, that we were more urgent, more you know attacking, more snappy, getting to the ball quicker? Yeah, I think it's something that we have... Uh, we saw in the first game, uh, the come on against Hibs, and we were all really encouraged by it. Sparta Prague away was a difficult game. We were we were kind of forced into a certain formation because of the personnel that were available. First half we really struggled in that game. Second half we were much better, but we never really saw that kind of taking control of of the game. And it was we always knew that was going to be a difficult game in the group. Anyway, Sunday I think was a bit of a watershed moment. We were obviously at the game for the for the podcast covering it. We spoke at length both after the game and then the podcast on Monday about the fact that we just. We lost all the good things that were that had been there from the Hibs game, and um, we didn't have the we didn't have the press going forward. We um, were starting to do those shit lateral passes, as <laughs> come on put it. Um, we were doing that much more. Come on, was desperate for us to go forward and forward and forward, and we were took a bit of time for us to to get there. Um, but we didn't give up on Sunday, which so Sunday was more of a, an, an insight into the mentality than it was into the. Into how we into how we play, um, and then uh, I have no idea why you held up four. The, the four pillars, Craig. The four uh, pillars <laughs> mentality is one of them. I, I was like, we definitely did not score four goals on Sunday, <laughs> 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 um, but we did win the game. And then tonight um, was much more comfortable and much more how you want to play against teams like Dundee. That are I know Dundee have had a fairly decent start to the season, um, and um, there was always the risk that. Um, I sort of the bus was obviously things like the bus being delayed, the game being delayed, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, can feed into to games being quite turgid. But it was anything but tonight. It was really enjoyable to watch, um, and I thought I thought we I thought we did really, we did really well. I mean, what did you what did you make of the first half performance? What did you make of um, the movement that we saw from Danilo? What did you make of? Did you think it was a step up from from what we've seen in the last couple of games? 
Yeah, like there's not even a question about that. If anybody thinks that that wasn't a step up, uh, I, 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 I dread to think what what else you you know about football. But yeah, Danilo for me was 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 brilliant. Uh, you said he just it's just something different. He just seems he's a lot more comfortable with his back to goal, especially he plays better passes than Dessers at the moment. I mean, we'll certainly come on to it. I, I think that's what you get with a confident Dessers because that that finish that he had tonight was was outstanding. It was a really good finish. He could have had a hat trick Dessers, but yeah, it's just something I touched on again at the weekend. Is we we have a we can attack different ways. We were using the left predominantly in the first half with, with Sima and Yilmaz. Again, I think a really good partnership's forming there. Then second half, predominantly, I felt we were going much more down the right-hand side. But in amongst all that, we have got we can attack through the middle as well. With Danilo, you know, in that second half, he had that that header. He, he perhaps should have done a wee bit better um, and, and kept it down. I mean, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be too critical when we when we've just won five 0 and on a couple of missed chances. But that's the difference. I felt Yilmaz was much more secure tonight than he was on yeah. um, Sunday. Obviously, we, we spoke about the fact that Hearts targeted him with with kind of longer balls over the top or um, cross balls from wide areas. But I felt Yilmaz was much more secure tonight. His final ball was still a bit hit and miss, but um, defensively and and in possession, I thought he was he was he was a real positive tonight. Yeah, yeah, he was. He certainly had a better game than what he had against Hearts. Um, and, and that's what you're looking for. Every game, you're just looking for improvements. These guys are still trying to impress the manager. And as long as you're getting better every game, that, that that's the main thing. Um, look, the, the next thing I want to come on to uh, here, Craig, was we'll jump straight into the second half. Obviously, Danilo touched a wee bit about him there. Um, what what did you make of his overall game, his performance tonight? He, he did offer something different up front, didn't he? And, and if he's fit, now on, I'm assuming that he will be able to complete a full 90 minutes. He has to start, doesn't he? He absolutely has to. And I think everyone knows that. We were probably a bit unsure. He played like, what, two and a half games or something for us in total or something like that before he, he sort of came back from his um, his facial injury. But he's he's been a breath of fresh air, I think. And it's he showed what he's shown is the real difference. And I guess probably what the club was trying to we're trying to build by buying Dessers and Danilo in terms of two different styles of striker and two different ways of playing and so we could mix it up and Dessers hasn't hit the ground running at all anything anything but if we are if we're if we're honest and we've spoken about that at length. But Danilo, you can see the difference in quality. You can see why we kind of pushed the boat out to six million pounds for him. He's if we can get him on a run, he's um he's going to get score a lot of goals. For us, which is which is really encouraging. He definitely knows where the goal is. He's not scared to have a shot. Um, his as soon as he gets the ball, actually, if he's facing towards the opposition goal, his first shot is how his first aim is. Sorry, how do I get a shot away on goal? Um, which I don't think we've had for a little while, to be honest. No. Um, especially when Alfredo Morelos kind of went off off form as well the last eighteen months, couple of years or so. But it's really refreshing to see. It's really encouraging to see, and hopefully. We get to see more and more of that as um, as time goes on, and he gets his fitness back, etc. There's a few times where I, th- I thought, oh, "Is he struggling for? Is he struggling for fitness a wee bit, or is he is he hurt himself a wee bit there?" But he kept he kept going, and um, I wonder if he's been practicing his Scottish um, version of superb since you spoke to him <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> Yeah, no, he was that. That is the word for him. He was absolutely superb. Um, maybe the next week. Few- we bit of play that, that I want to talk about here, our, our player as well. Sam Lammers, I, like you, very surprised that he started. I was advocating that I would have McCausland playing over him this game, to be to be perfectly honest with you. He was rotten, had a couple of poor touches, poor passes in, in the first half, but as he got on, his Rangers were a bit more comfortable, more confident. You started to see sort of elements of his play. Danilo, firstly, he had that that ball. He headed it down, took it down well, and Lammers. And what a finish that was under the top left corner. What what did you make of of, of Sam Lammers' performance tonight? Yeah, I think he probably started because Cantwell wasn't really fit enough to start, or Clement chose to rest Cantwell kind of thing and only bring him on for thirty minutes with an eye on the sort of League Cup semi final on Sunday. Sam Lammers. T- I think um, what was what was the word you used there? Did you say he was awful, or did you say what, what word did you use there? I, honestly, I can't remember. He wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought he was fine in the first half. To be honest, he was he wasn't great. He wasn't crap. 
he was just fine. He did that thing a couple of times where he he um he got the ball and he, he had loads of space one side, but he just immediately turned into the opposition player and lost the ball. But I thought in general he was fine. He played a couple of good balls across the box and the face of goal and stuff like that. So he wasn't setting the header alight, I think it's fair to say. But as you say, as the game went on, he did um, come more and more into it. He, I think Dundee probably gave him a bit more space as well. He had that little um, flurry. I can't remember if it was the end of first half or start of second half where he took it around two or three players at the um, at the edge of the box. And then I think it was Sima had a, attempted to curl one into the top corner and went quite a bit wide. But he, he did fine. He didn't. I don't think he convinced me that he is a better player than I think he is. I don't think he did anything to do that, but his goal was tremendous. Everyone loves an off the crossbar and in goal. Um, I think he tries. I think he, I think he tries that once a game. He'll, he always gets a shot on target, even if he's struggling. Um, but he doesn't. His his goal ratio is just not nothing to write home about. So to see that go in the back of net, I was actually quite happy for him. He's obviously him. Both him and Dessers have been on the end of some ironic cheers when they've been substituted in recent games, which I think has been unfair. Um, it's not their fault that they're still on the pitch. That's a managerial decision. Um, they, um, but I think tonight, um, Sam Lowers in particular, was good, happy to see his goal. And what I find really interesting, and I didn't actually notice it until we were in the post-match press conference for the Hearts game on Sunday and Danilo spoke about the team spirit and he talked about the team spirit being fantastic and everyone's fighting for everyone and everyone's really encouraging everyone. And it wasn't until I watched the Hearts highlights back and then I watched that game tonight, literally everyone is supporting everyone in, in every way possible and they're geeing everyone up and they're, they're all yeah. high-fiving and if someone does something wrong, they're not getting on their back, they're encouraging them and... They, um, when Sam Lammer scored, everyone was up there giving him like massive hugs and and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Same with Dessers for the for the fourth goal, and and that's that's what you want to see from a football club. Even even when the um, even if they're struggling a little bit, they've still got the mentality of that togetherness and building that that yeah. that um, that feel that you want. And it's it wasn't something that I'd picked up on, to be honest, until Danilo mentioned it in his press conference. And actually, when you start to look at wee things, like Sima hits a shot 20 yards wide, he still gets a few like high fives, like right idea, or, like wrong execution kind of yeah. ideas. Of it. And um, when he scored goals as well, everyone was delighted for, for Sam Lammers. Everyone was delighted for Cyril Dessers when he scored as well. Like um, Connor Goldson running full into the park to give him a, a, a sort of high five and a hug yeah. kind of thing, and that sort of thing. And it's what it's the little things that you you don't notice, and especially if you're focused on a negative performance. But actually, I'd encourage people to look for that in the coming games because the team spirit is there, and um, despite the struggles we've had so far, it's there. It's there, and it's a real positive. I think. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. On Sam Lammers, I was actually going to say it was nice to just see him playing a match where he hasn't actually hit the goal frame, but he did. It just this time it went in. Um, and yeah, it's, listen, if we're going to keep winning or we're going to win five 0 the players can encourage themselves all they bloody want. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, maybe the next wee bit is Sam Lammers again. Controversial, I think. Maybe the Dundee players, some of the Dundee supporters, were expecting a, a foul here. Not for me. Uh, played a really, really good ball through to Dessers. Dessers, it, this is a, another unbelievable finish into the top corner, and I think it was just a sign of the team being confident. Um, but the next thing I'll move on to is the the penalty. Straight away when I saw it, I was like, that's a penalty all day long. Is When Tav went down... I thought it was, I thought it was two separate penalties. <laughs> yeah. Like, see the replay. I actually, I ended up watching... Um, took a wee holiday and ended up watching it in Dundee TV um, because Rangers <laughs> TV wasn't quite working properly for me. So um, it was interesting hearing their commentator that I don't think they had the benefit of a replay anywhere. So they were talking about how it wasn't a foul on Tavernier and they hadn't seen what happened with Dessers. But I think when you did see the replay, yeah, it's a clear as, clear as day penalty um, for one. And then the Cyril Dessers one where the, the, the him and the defender kind of like had a, had a, they kind of squared up to each other a couple of times and the defender just two-handed shoves him off. It's, it's like, that's a clear as day yeah. penalty as well. So the referee obviously didn't get to see that because he was looking at the James Tavernier one, but two clear as day penalties. And I don't think there can be any complaints about that one. And um, I don't think no matter how hard you look, you can find a conspiracy theory 
moment in there for those. Yeah, totally agree. Um, and look, and just to, to wrap up the podcast and the final point, I am stunned that we've actually not mentioned this man's name at all in the podcast. It's John Lundstrom. For me, he had another man of the match performance. I I don't know what Clement is telling him or what he's what he, what type of coffee he's drinking these days, but uh, he is a completely changed player. His his pass, he just you could see it. He was a player that I think was really affected at Ibrooks when when fans would start to get on his back. You could see the head going down, but I just I know again. It's only four games, but he really seems to have taken what Clement has said on board, and he just he's not afraid to make mistakes now. I think that's the biggest thing. What was your take on on John Lundstrom tonight? I think he's playing in his natural position as well. I don't, I don't, I think, I don't think we are playing with sort of. He was sort of going between being defensive mid and being right centre mid, and then playing as a, a defensive, like a double defensive mid almost. And I don't think any of those kind of suited what John Lundstrom wants to do. Other, I think Michael Beale in particular, maybe even slightly under Gio, but definitely under Michael Beale, it was very possession focused. So he was yeah. more focused on trying to keep the ball than he was trying to create chances or move the team up the field, whereas that's completely different under Fluke Clement. Fluke, Fluke Clement wants you to go forward, and if you don't go forward, you're getting an earful from the manager. <laughs> um, and I think John Lundstrom has taken that to heart, and I'm glad he has because yeah, he's, he's driving the team forward now. He's having a real impact on the tempo of the game. He's not slowing it down. He's not going sideways and backwards. He's going forward eight times out of ten, and that's a real positive for us it's really encouraging and I'm really enjoying watching him play now um whereas I would have happily sold him in the summer so um yeah. I'm really, it's, it's such a such a change whether he's the answer long term or not I don't know but he is um he's making a real difference to this team at this team just now and he's putting in he got man of the match on Sunday against Hearts and I thought he was really good again today yeah I totally agree with you there I, I, was he man of the match for you at interest um, I don't know who I thought was my. I'd, I'd probably say Danilo actually was being man of the match for me just because of the difference he made um, to the team, the the movement he had. He, he should have had about four goals, mind you. So um, maybe that takes a few points away from him. But I would definitely say Danilo is is my man of the match tonight. Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's always a good sign when there's uh, quite a few players you can pick man of the match from. Um, I look, I, I think that wraps it up nicely tonight for me. Ultimately, a really really good team performance. We saw dominant football, which Clement has promised. We were pressing, we were quick, we were snappy, and we won five 0 This is the best I felt about Rangers in a long long time, Craig. I don't know about you. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've got to see a five star performance from Rangers. <laughs> oh, it's about too cheesy. A bit too cheesy even for me, but I, I enjoyed watching Rangers again. I felt similar after the Hibs game. Obviously, the Sparta Prague game and the Hearts game were a bit different. I'm hoping that what we'll, what we'll start to see and what we'll start to get from Fluke Clement's team is more more games like this, more feelings like this, and getting back to enjoy Rangers. It's been a bit of a chore for for quite a long time now, and um, I just want to enjoy watching football again, to be honest, right? than thinking or dreading it so um, tonight was another step in that direction me and you will be at the game on Sunday together and hopefully we'll be heading to a, to a League Cup final as well Yeah that's it Craig and I will be bringing you some reaction uh, hopefully from, from Hamden or close to Hamden uh, as soon as uh, as quickly as possible uh, after the game finishes but look uh, just to finish on that Clamont came in and he said he wasn't Harry Potter and he didn't have a magic wand but I'm not sure I quite believe that now but take care